there, Alan here, and I want to introduce you and welcome you to Dwarshack State Park. This is in north central Idaho, uh, not far from Orofino, but very far from Orofino. The ride to get here is only 24 miles, but took me well over an hour because of the kinds of roads that you take to get here. I don't mean the roads aren't in good shape, I mean we're talking about hills and we're talking about curves. Let me give you a second and I'm going to show you around. I'm back. <laughs> so uh, I've got some other video for you to show off the park and I'm also going to be talking with you about some of the issues when you're this far into the woods. And by the way, do you notice how lush the vegetation is? It's amazing to me. We're only at about a thousand feet of elevation here and way inland. This is not the Pacific Coast. I mean, this is Idaho, uh, but yet it kind of looks like um, the uh, Bellingham area, uh, frankly, to me, the vegetation is almost as thick as in Bellingham or out on the San Juans or the Gulf Islands. Uh, you can look up on a map where those are, and those are some other beautiful places in the northwestern United States. But Orfino and, and Dorshak State Park, I give it my thumbs up, and I say, listen, if you come out, please come and visit. Um, I will show you some more video about the area, and I'm also going to be talking about some of the issues in living in such a remote area, because connectivity is an issue, obviously food is an issue, there is no food within an hour of here. <laughs> All right, that's the bottom line. I mean, there's no store down the road. Last summer when I was at Steamboat Lake uh, for the summer, while that was about 28 or 30 miles outside of the town of Steamboat, the road was pretty quick to get back and forth. And um, between Steamboat and, uh, and the park, uh, there were a few places where food and quote-unquote provisions could be had. Might pay a bit of a premium for them, but c'est la vie if you want to live in paradise. Here we're living in paradise and there's nothing around. Anyway, um, that'll do it for right now. Uh, turn you back over to maybe some more views and then uh, take a look at what I've written in the post. Thank you. golf cart and uh, we're going to take a slight tour of the a short tour of the campground uh, we're heading up from the main hookup area uh, where we have full service this is the group camping area and looking off to the left this is where we have a camping area it's more of an open field there are some trees in it and there's uh, no hookups there at all um, there is water for folks that have it in the general area. Now we're jumping ahead a little bit. We've made a left turn. We're heading down the hill towards the waterfront. This is where the uh, boat launch is. Uh, there's a boat dock down there too. Off to the left, there are other docks and there's a playground area and a swimming area. Also room for kayaks to go in the water and park rents, that kind of stuff, along with uh, you know other canoes, things like that, uh, wakeboards. Uh, so coming down to the waterfront, uh, this is a uh, uh, reservoir, a lake, if you will. Um, there's a dam about six miles down the road. And uh, what you're looking at is about 54 miles long, 54 miles long. And they dropped it down about 110 feet uh, during the uh, winter to allow for the snow melt. It's now come up about half of that, about 50 feet, and it's coming up a couple feet a day. Um, looking around, just panning around, you've got the waterfront area, and then we're going to jump to what it looks like from being on the boat uh, approaching the uh, waterfront area. So we're about to jump. <clears throat> there we are. Uh, we're on the water. We are approaching the uh, Docks, and you can see the uh, beachfront areas, you can see the hilliness of it, the lush. 
Uh, this is kind of jumping a little closer in. We're now really approaching the docks. Um, very little activity. This is just prior to uh, or just, yeah, just prior to Memorial Day weekend, if I recall. Uh, could be just after. We were taking a ride from uh, what's called Big Eddy, which is about six miles down the uh, lake towards the dam, right next to the dam. And uh, now we're on a uh, uh, truck route. Uh, we're riding a, a pickup truck, uh, heading out in one of the more remote areas of the park. And this is a, a three and a half mile stretch that goes into uh, a group camping area called Three Meadows. And this three and a half mile stretch is really remote. Uh, really natural. Uh, not many campers go back there. In fact, it's not encouraged unless there's something going on back at uh, Three Meadows because there, you will encounter, you're likely to encounter bear and moose, uh, neither of which you want to be alone when you encounter, and both of which you're probably better off being in a vehicle. So we're driving a road down there. And we're about to uh, jump to being at the Three Meadows campground. Uh, the Three Meadows campground, like I say, is a group reservation area. Uh, this group reservation area is um, uh, able to accommodate a large number of people. Um, that's uh, just one of the buildings there. I think it might be the shower house. Um, you've got a ranger's RV, which is just off to the side. There's room for a few RVs and campers. And then this is the main meeting hall, dining hall, uh, whatever you want to call it, uh, can accommodate over 100 people easily. Uh, indoors, and there's also outdoor seating. So Three Meadows looks like uh, quite a facility for people who want to use it. Uh, again, three and a half miles down from the main campground. 